Hey everybody, this is Walter Resendez with Access Electric, and today I wanted to talk to you about identifying unmarked leads on a nine lead Y connected motor. If you like these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you wanna be notified of upcoming videos, click on the bell and you'll be notified of everything we put out. With that being said, let's get right into the video. So with a nine lead Y connected motor, you're going to have four groups of windings. You're gonna have three groups of two and one group of three. And we're gonna figure out which is which by using an ohm meter to identify each group. So let's get right into that. I'm gonna pull my ohm meter. I'm gonna test it that I have continuity. And now I've already isolated the group of three and I've already labeled it seven, eight, and nine. But we'll go through and I'll show you how I found that. This group will have continuity with itself, but will not have continuity with any of the other wires in the motor. So we're gonna identify that group, and now we're gonna identify three groups of two. So let's grab a wire. Okay, that one has continuity, and we can see that it doesn't have continuity with any of the other wires in the motor. So we're gonna take this group and I'm gonna land it on this terminal block before I let go of the wire and, uh, and forget which group was which. So let's land that wire right there. So there is our first group. Okay, and now let's find the other group of two. Try this wire. Okay, there's a group. Okay, that's a group. So let's land it on our terminal block right here. And we're gonna land this one on this terminal block. Now, I've taped up these wires because these wires are labeled and I wanted to cover up the wire numbers. Seven, eight, and nine can be wired in any order, but I wanted to wire them correctly or number them correctly so that we, when we find the groups, we can prove that we found the, the right wires. Okay, so that's why I left that wire connected. Okay, so I have our three groups of two and our one group of three isolated and identified. And let's just double check with our ohmmeter. There's a group, there's another group, and there's another group. So we have our, our, all our groups identified and isolated from one another. So we don't need our ohm meter anymore. We're just gonna move that out of the way. So for this next part of the test, we're gonna use a six volt battery and a millivolt multimeter. Uh, this is a galvanometer which tests for induction and in coils, but I'm just going to use the millivolt range on this meter. And so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our meter and we're gonna go across one of our groups of two doesn't matter which. And we're gonna first try to figure out which group is group one and four, which group is three and six, and which group is five and eight. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go say from eight to nine with my battery. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna connect my battery to nine on the negative, and I'm gonna flash eight with the positive, and you can see the meter on the galvanometer is barely moving, which tells me that this is probably group one and four. The, me the needle on the, on the meter is going to barely move if I find the furthest winding away from, the, from eight and nine, and that should be group one and four. And to test that out, I'm gonna test the other two groups. So I go to eight and nine again, and the meter moves quite a bit. So this is either three and six or five and two. And I'm gonna to go to the last group. And I'm gonna to go to eight, nine again, and the meter moves quite a bit. So this first group here was group one and four. I don't know which wire is number one. I don't know which wire is number four, but I know that's the right group. So now, 
we're going to test a different group. Let's let's go ahead and test for this group and see. So um, if I go from uh, seven to eight, I that should I should be able to locate group three and six if I test between seven and eight. So let me go to eight on the negative here and I'll flash number seven and there's hardly any inflection. So that tells me this is probably group three and six. Let me go to the, this would be then eight and two and I should get quite a bit of inflection, which I do. And this is group one and four, which we already identified and I should get quite a bit of inflection. So we know that this is one and four. We know that this group is three and six because it gets the least amount of inflection when I flash across seven and eight. And it barely moves the needle, barely registers. So great, group one and four right here, group three and six, we still gotta identify which wire is which. So to get five and two, we're going to flash between seven and nine. Seven and nine, so I'm gonna move my negative on the battery to nine and I'm gonna flash seven, and the meter barely registers. So great, so I've, I've found all four of my groups, and now I have to identify which wires which within each group. So first of all, let's begin with one and four. Let's begin with one and four. We'll just move these wires here. With one and four, I'm gonna take my negative terminal and put it to seven, and I'm going to Flash number nine. All right, and if I get a positive inflection on my meter when I touch, a positive inflection on my meter means that the positive terminal on my meter is connected to number one and the negative terminal on my meter is connected to number four. So I'm going to go ahead and identify those wires. So I'm gonna put a number one on this wire and a number four on this wire and then later we're going to reveal the wire numbers on these wires to make sure we got these correct. So next let's look for three and six and to do that we're going to put our negative on number nine and we are going to flash number eight. Again our negative will go on number nine and we're going to flash number eight. And you see we get a negative inflection which, so I'm gonna reverse the polarity on my meter, my meter wires here. And I'm gonna flash number eight again. So I got a positive inflection, which means this should be number three, and this should be number six. The positive wire should be on number three. The negative wire should be on number six. So let me go ahead and I identify those. This should be number three. And this here should be number six. Okay, so now our last one to identify would be eight and two. I'm sorry, five and two. So for five and two, we're gonna take our negative and put it on eight, and we're gonna flash number seven with our positive from our battery. And here we go. And we got a positive inflection on the meter. So that tells me that our positive on, on going from our meter should be on two and our negative should be on five. Okay, so let's disconnect all this and let's, uh, let's see if we got our, our windings correct. This is five and if we reveal the tape on this wire and uh, taped it up really good, and I can see it already, it is five, okay? So five is connected to number five on the wire, number five on the label, very good. This should be number two. So let's see if I can remove this tape. I taped it up too good is what I did. And I can see already that we are on wire number two. Those are correct. So let's try number wire number one and as you can see, number one is number one. Great. How about number four? Number four on the terminal. Number four on the wire. Very good. So we're batting a thousand so far. Let's get this wire right here. 
This should be number three, which it is. I can see number three right there. Perfect. Number three is number three right there on the wire. And the last one, um, I taped it up too well. I have to basically <laughs> pull this all off, but that's the last wire. It has to be number six. So there you go. Each group is identified correctly. So one other thing I'm gonna do for you, I have a sheet that explains exactly how to do what we just did today. And I am going to post that below in the description section. And you're welcome to download that and use it, reference that, uh, try this out on your own Y-Connected motors. And uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.